This is a poem called Finch. Uh, I'm Maria McManus and this is an offering for Poetry Day 2020. Finch. Is that you I hear singing? Are you untangling your hair? A finch is matching you note for note. She has taken a place somewhere high up, out of sight near the eaves of your house. The meticulous graft of long dead bees, a petrified eerie, a catacomb shuttered against the blue sky, the distant spring, against the satisfaction of everything longed for, rendered impossible but longed for just the same. Hold out. There is no sign of rescue, that's for sure. It may well be you are forgotten, barricaded, separate. All evidence points to that and for all we know, it might be permanent. Know this then. Know that you still occupy some small forgotten corner of sweetness. Know this. You still have light. Know this. The finch is matching you note for note. She is staying out the winter, somewhere high up, out of sight, near the eaves of your house. My name is Nandi Jola. Happy Poetry Day 2020. Tapestry of Love. Let us give love a chance to give our children hope of a world without hatred where black and white walk hand in hand. Let the peace walls come down so that the ghost of apartheid, of the troubles, of Holocaust and the Rwanda genocide can be finally laid to rest. For history to remain history only to be found in books on shelves. Stories must be told by those that are victorious. Together let us dance to freedom and emancipate in one song, one celebration, one love. For we are one race of many colours, many voices, many dreams, one unity, one heart, a tapestry of love. My name is Miho McCann and I hope everyone has a really happy Poetry Day 2020 in the strangest times as we're having. Um, I'm going to read a poem that I wrote for a very dear friend of mine um, who I haven't seen in a long time and the poem is called Fried Egg Sandwich. Ellen, the night has been at the unlocked door since you left and isn't going away despite my loud reading about somewhere, anywhere else. Your face has become acquainted with my worn, parked phone screen. Sanctuary spilling out. Let us be courageous, you'd say. Birdsong pecks through my rudimentary speakers and whiskers of garnet flowers bob behind you. And there, I never have been there. I've begun to say man when I mention a person or conclude a tough day, breathing out quietly. I've internalized how you speak. We live our love and take you with me as I unlock the front door to find a fresh carton of eggs. Oh man, I'll say, as one breaks, laughing over my jorts. Oh man, I'll say, as an afternoon rain comes on over my yard and if it blesses yours too, that you have that parka, that Joni is playing from the radio inside, so faint she could be confused for hope. Siobhan Campbell. Happy Poetry Day 2020. I dedicate this to Ivan Boland. Promise. She could name all these wildflowers of the hills, and because there was a story to be told, she could pull through breast and brains the way they took these names from a distant past. A past before there rose a single god, 
under whom the outrage was to wage. She could name them, and the stamen of their being stood still in the act of naming. The scent of them flew out from her tongue, a bound to the legendary wounding. And she would touch each pistol, there, like that, between a crooked finger and a solid thumb, yet not bruise it, but trace and lift it up, as if that too would clear, would hold the sound still in the valley and resound it out beyond. Yes, let it fly to wing seedlings from a clearing sky. I'd like to read a poem called Invoking St. Kieran of Sire. It's about um, the days after my father's death, which will be 12 years this year. And I thought it, in a strange way, fitted with the theme There Will Be Time because those days were so important, as the poem says, and so many people are missing that time now. This is called Invoking St. Kieran of Sire. When the blackbirds begin to build their nest against your house, we take it as a good sign, an omen of continuance, of the birds knowing it a gentle place, trusting its rafters, burrowing into the soft hydrangea, coming right into the luxual house, the house of the dead. They swoop in, the rich open sow of their wings a sound bigger than themselves, comic with beards of grass, busy with the build. But at your month's mind, the birds are frantic through the night, and in the morning the perfect nest is overturned, one small fledgling left by the sparrowhawk upon the ground, and the bewildered mother bird, still flying in with worms, unable to break her instinctive act. I lift the scalding and feel again the cold of death as I had on your cheek in the bright mornings of that May week when I stole downstairs to be with you alone. Now I wish I had the power of the Midland Saint, whose prayer alone could bring back the birds, could put the breath back into men when it had gone. Hello, my name is Paul Maddern and happy Poetry Day 2020. I'm coming to you today from Caridor in County Down. And I'm gonna read a poem called Monuments which was included in an anthology called The Lee Green Down, edited by Eileen Casey, and it was poets responding to the work of Patrick Kavanagh. Monuments. He's beside the stream, this water-drawn man, the slow swirl of an oxbow bend, leading him to pause in the frame of his field and abandon the bank he's shoring up with stone. To notice snow melt forcing itself the length of the clogged mill race, water pooling in the ploughed clay ground, the low grey clouds. And he decides then to plant an orchard in the lee of the resurrected mill and to pour foundations for an orangery with a view of the stream for company. And there must be statuary, something with the musculature of a god, something to stand in the slow waters of the oxbow bend, something more in stone. He wades into the stream and arms outstretched, mimics the canopy of branches creaking with the weight of ivy. He tilts his head to the sky and welcomes the rain, water sensuous, stone proud. He holds the pose.